Jay from the Big Buck Registry. We're here live at the 2019 ATA show, and we thought we'd check in with our good friends and sponsors, Rackologies and Jason Obermiller. We've talked to them on podcasts before. We've had them on our live BBR Thursday nights. We've been on uh, individual live shows that we've done. Yep. We've shot some videos from afar, but we're here together. Yep. We're here to actually feel and touch and smell and see all this good stuff that you've got going on at Rackology this year. It's a great story. If you want to check it out, you really should go check out the podcast because we explained a lot of stuff. But let's just kind of go over what the story is. And you're, you're a school teacher, you're a biologist, uh, and Eric Fitzgerald, who's behind us over there, he's an agronomist. And you guys came together, you guys were buddies. Tell us the story about how it all kind of came together. So, you know, it really got all kind of started by an accident. <laughs> Um, I'm a high school science teacher and got my master's in biology and I did my master's study on antler growth in deer and from there I kind of adjuncted to deer nutrition and herd health and fawn development and all that good stuff and the thing that I kept coming back to and finding out was their, the nutritional requirements for deer, what they need and more specifically the ratios that all those new nutrients had to be with each other in order for them to actually be absorbed and not just pass through the body. And so as I researched, you know, products in the market, um, I just kind of came to the conclusion that I wanted to make my own products for myself that had the right nutrition at the right ratios that I wasn't finding out there. And not discounting anybody else's product, it was just something that me being serious about growing deer and deer nutrition, I just knew I wanted to do it myself. So I started mixing our own, you know, my own products, did it in a five gallon bucket for almost a year and a half, I think, uh, before I had Eric help me out getting it bagged. You know, did that for about another year before, you know, people started seeing our game camera pictures and stuff like that. And they were wanting to know if they can get it. And you know, at first I really was against selling it. I did not want to, I didn't want to sell it. I didn't want to market it. And probably the big reason why was I had, a number of years in researching this and developing it and I wasn't looking at the money side of things I was looking at it like I don't want nobody to know about this I got too much time into it I don't want to get copied and I don't I don't want the competition I, I, I don't want to do this you weren't thinking about starting a business at that no point. I mean I'm a, a teacher I got a family I'm a taxidermist I just I love to hunt and I I don't have time for a lot of the stuff I love doing that now let right. alone doing right. this so you know, kind of a long story, a little bit shorter. Um, I finally let Eric start carrying his shop, which I was against for the longest time. And that's when it just began to kind of start to spread, you know, into a few other counties. And then next thing you know, a couple little shops in different states. And it just finally got to the point where people were wanting products that were legitimate for their deer. They wanted stuff that was actually researched by a biologist and an agronomist. You know, not just put together by a nutritionist just for somebody. Like, we actually have the research into this product. And so that's kind of where it started to snowball. And Eric, being the agronomist, he formulated our food plots the same way I did our nutrients. You know, the plants are in the right ratios so that you don't have a certain group of plants that outcompetes these plants. Because you're paying for all the plants in the bag. Don't you want them all to come up? So they're ratioed to have a symbiotic relationship with each other. There's a nurse crop in there that allows these main plants to grow, uh, create a, a healthier soil along with it and not outcompete each other. And then another thing that's kind of becoming a huge product for us is our uh, fertilizer and supplement for our food plots. And what that basically is, is not only is it a fertilizer for your plants, but it's a supplement also that contains the key ingredient minerals that deer need for antler growth and herd health, fawn gestation, skeletal development, all that immune system that now is in a form that plants can take up. Because normally plants only want to take up the nutrients that they need, right? They're not thinking, boy, I want to feed the deer, right? So now it allows the plants to take up these uh, minerals. They're also ratioed correctly. They're in a form that they can absorb and there's components in the fertilizer also that allows the soil microbes to be super healthy and when that happens they begin to decompose all this other locked up organic matter that's in the soil releasing it now to the plants 
there's nothing like it on the market. And if anything ever does come out on the market, frankly, we got copied because this is something that we have not seen. And we've had this developed now for years. It's something that we got a number of big names in the industry that have been just using it to see what they think. And we've had awesome results with all these products. So, you know, that's, that's how we got started. This is how we got here. Not that we tried to get to this point. The industry basically just kind of guided us in the direction that it's kind of brought you in. It, it did. It literally brought us in. And even the people that we've talked to in this industry, they heard about the real research that went behind these products right. and wanted to visit. Like, your, guy, your guys are the ones that actually develop these products. You get the research, the knowledge behind them. You know, when people email or call, you know, businesses call us, they talk to us. You know, and, and a lot of the stuff we do goes even beyond our products here. It's, there's a lot of consulting that we've done and so forth. So it's yeah. just a passion, you know, now. So you're, you're going to start seeing a lot more of this as, as you're, you grow the company and you get these products out to other distribution points as, uh, in stores near you. You've got a Orsland, I think it was. What was the other? Uh, Orsland's and Rural King were Royal on the King. shelves. Yeah, so you guys that are listening or watching you right now, you probably have one of those stores near you. You can get it at a lot of those places. Cabela's.com. Okay, Cabela's. Um, Walmart.com. Okay. We're getting back up on Amazon.com, RidgeRoadOutdoors.com, and then obviously Rackology.org. Okay. But and we're really, you know, we're just we're also really needing to get into small mom and pop archery and and sporting goods stores because those are the people that are going to use our products and understand and, right. and know them and be able to speak to the customers that come in and say, hey, what do you got that is going to be good for my deer? You know, so we're reaching out also to, you know, to for dealers like that as well. So we got a really good booth here at the ATA 2019. Uh, we're, we're in Louisville right now. So if you go over here, if you look at the big bags that we have, big white bags. Jason, this is kind of where the company started, right? This this was your formula. You put this together. This is what you were feeding your deer. Yep. And yeah. as you said, the, the industry kind of sucked you in, and this is where it all started. Yeah, the industry kind of told us the direction that it wanted us to go and so we obviously had to do a little bit of adaptation but right. you know originally we had what and we still have it it's called the total package and that was our original flagship product uh, my big thing was i wanted everything in one bag to me common sense is i want my attractant i want my protein i want my vitamins i want my mineral ratioed correctly and all in one bag rather than trying to pick and piece and find all this take the guesswork out is kind of what i thought people wanted and so we had that main product. It was just in a plain white bag. You know, eventually we had customers come and say, hey, can, can we get something that's just a little bit cheaper that's just the attractant? Or can I get only the mineral to put out? And so at that point is when we did, you know, we listened to the customers, we separated it out. And from there, the more customers told us what they wanted. We, we needed smaller bags also for people that just wanted to backpack stuff in or, you know, same with our food plots. You know, we started off uh, in full acre bags and you know working with some of the the, the bigger companies you know they kind of clued us in that the average food plots a quarter acre or less that kind of led us to the smaller bags um, but we still deal with a lot of big you know people that have a lot of a lot of ground that want bigger food plots and we custom blend things yeah. you know you don't have to buy 10 bags a quarter acre if you're wanting a bigger plot we can you know we can put it all in one bag and send it and so that's, you know. So you can pick up the 40 pound bags, those, that's the mineral, but then you got the minerals and you brought them into these smaller bags, and which is much easier to carry. You know, it's, if you just want to go put some mineral out right now and it's a lot easier to carry in, you'd have to take a four wheel or some other uh, vehicle to get in. Yep. But then from the mineral, you got into the seed company or the seed business. Yep. And you broke it down into some very cool aspects. I mean, this one right here is the fertilizer. This one is, I'm hearing a lot about the show, and as we're doing here at the ATA, one of, one of our favorite things to do is to go around and look at innovative products. And we're doing that so that you can be aware and learn from our business here what's coming in 2019 to all the retail stores. So we're trying to get a one up on uh, what's coming so you can be ready for it. But there's nothing better than th starting to think about a food plot right now yep. for your deer season next year, yep, right? Exactly. So, start planning so th this is the fertilizer and there's a lot of buzz about this thing um, yep. what how did you formulate this what's this about and why is it so hot well 
kind of how it all got started was we had some a number of customers that kept calling and in states like uh, Illinois and places where you can't legally supplement deer and they were calling going man can is there any can we take and pour this stuff can we pour this on the ground and get these minerals into our plants and of course this is formulated for deer it's chelated for deer and it's ratioed for deer this is not meant to be taken up by plants now if you poured this stuff out in the ground would it eventually end up in the plant yeah but this is not the direction or route you want to go and so we're getting a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of pull to come up with something where you can supplement your deer through your food plot because it's never been done before. Um, they're spray-on foliars. Um, they can be good in certain instances, but a lot of times they wash off. Uh, once the deer eat it and take up the nutrition that you sprayed on, and the plant grows back, you got to go back out there and spray it on again. And so, you know, I went to Eric, who's the agronomist, and like what can we do to supplement our deer through the food plot so people can use this but at the same time make it super economical but at the, also we want i want the the best thing just like we did everything else making it for ourselves first and that's when he began to research and develop our food plot fertilizer and so he put a lot of the key minerals that deer need uh, for antler growth uh, for fawn development gestation reproductive health immune system health and those minerals are in this bag. They're chelated for plants so that the plant can take it up. The other components in this bag also make it so that the soil microbes, like I explained earlier, are super healthy. And they're gonna decompose all this dead organic matter and release even more nutrition, more carbon into the soil, which now makes the soil, because the, the soil is a living microorganism, basically. And when you make it super healthy, the plants that live there, are gonna be happy, they're gonna take up as much nutrition as possible versus holding things back because they're in a stressed environment. And the other thing also is it's developed in a way that instead of having one piece of fertilizer over here that contains this mineral, one over here, everything that's in this bag is on every pellet. Whereas pretty much anything else out there that's granular, as you spread it, there might be a nitrogen over here a phosphorus over here, a zinc, a boron, and the roots can't get to all those. But when it's on every pellet, which you have good coverage with, it'll get there. So we got great coverage. This is the other reason why you can take something this size and it'll do a quarter acre bag. So all these things are formulated for all quarter acre coverage, right? Right. That's cool because, you know, uh, it's nice you put it on there. I don't know, what is that in feet? Figure out, like, if you had to pay well, off a quarter well, acre, quarter acre yeah. is 11,000 square feet. Okay. So, you know, if you were to do, do the math that, on yeah. that and pace it right. off. Kind of like you're pacing off your archery target. Okay, I'm uh, 40 yards from my, my target. You can pace off your food plot in the same way. Yeah, if you just do the math, which I'm not a math teacher. I'm a science teacher, so that's my excuse here. <laughs> but. If you were to figure out what squared is about roughly 11,000 square feet, you know, that's that's a quarter right. acre. If, if somebody has that answer, maybe we should do a giveaway yeah. or something. <laughs> Tell you what. Do, you, wanna, you, give me, you give us the answer, we'll figure it up First quick and send you a question, shirt. What, how many paces 11,000 square feet is? What do you want to give away? I don't go, you can get a shirt, whatever, one of whatever they want. All right. That's what gotta have their address and everything. First. You gotta get an address. First person to post that, gonna, get a free bag of whatever's here. Yeah, yep. yep. Um, so you put it in quarter acre bags and you've got a bunch of different blends. You've got a brassica mix, mm -hmm. you've got the sanctuary mix. Brassica, I understand, uh, brassica's nice stuff. How is it different? I mean, you, you guys are innovative. You think outside the box. What's different about the seeds that you're, you're putting in the bags? Well, the first thing that we wanted to accomplish with our seeds that we've had issues with in the past is Number one, is it, is it fresh seed? Is it viable? Um, on the back, it's got your, your pure column, your germination, and your origin. So everything's on here, it's all tested. It's fresh seed. There's not a bunch of filler in our seed. So you're getting what you're paying for here. Also, these seeds are ratioed correctly. Eric designed it so that certain plants are not going to outcompete the other ones that are in this bag. And so what that ensures is you're going to get the most 
growth and the most vigor from all of your seeds, and there's going to be very little intercompetition. It's going to be more symbiotic, right? And so that's kind of a big kicker. And the other thing, again, is he's just super diligent about it's got to be fresh. We're not. We're using this year's seed. We got to pitch the old. We pitch the old. I mean, that's just. We design these for ourselves first and foremost. And I think that's the thing that people like about us is we've we've got we've got products that we don't hold anything back on. Right. I mean, how how often? Have, have, I mean, I don't do it uh, anymore. But you're thinking, hey, I should put in a food plot sometime. It's after the season. You walk into the discount store, or it's on a discount shelf. You pick up seed, you throw it out there. What happens? Nothing. Yeah. Well, and very in, little. Yeah. And and in every food plot company's defense out there, because I mean, we're all essentially in this together, whether we're competitors or not. It's in everybody's defense. When you go into a store and buy some discounted seed, it may or may not be from the year before that they're trying to get rid of because stores end up with excess product. That's just how it works. And you're, you may be getting what you pay for. You're getting discounted cheaper seed, but it may have sat on that shelf for two years and now the germination rate begins to go way down. Right. So, you know, if, if you plant product, whatever, and it doesn't grow, you know, the last thing I really like hearing is, oh yeah, I planted this product and it, it was garbage. You know, maybe it wasn't garbage, just maybe it was old seed that was on the shelf. I mean, you got it for cheaper. So in their, in everybody's defense, you know, you have to do a little bit of digging, a little research, and kind of realize that you do. You get what you pay for in this in this market. Where, where would you plant a brassica? Like, what's the ideal place to plant that? You mean like as far as soil type yeah, or like soil location? Soil type, lo location, both. I mean, all of our plots are formulated to grow pretty much anywhere, given that they've got enough moisture. But our brassica mix has grown great, and we've had great luck with it in sandy soils, loam soils, silty soils, you name it. Like again, I said, as long as we're not talking drought conditions or flood, which happened a lot this year with places. I mean, we had places that were three feet underwater, and the plot's not going to survive that, you know, let alone a number of inches. Um, you know, the thing too is a, a big component also is the the soil bed uh, preparation. Um, a lot of people just want throw and grows. And throw and grows are great if you can get in there and clear everything off so you have great seed to soil contact. But if you go in there and kill off a spot and maybe even mow it and then go and spread your seed, but the seed's falling on all this dead grass and stuff, it's not going to germinate. And if it does germinate, it's going to grow and then die because it can't hit the soil. So you do, you, you have to, it, it's going to take some work. Even the people that, you know, we've got a one gal that was just here a little bit ago. She uh, hiked up into her holler one weekend and sprayed the spot, killed it out, came back a week or so later, raked off all the dead, made sure that it was dirt that the seed was falling on, spread it, raked it in, left, came back about two weeks later and you know, took some great pictures. I think we actually got it on one of our Instagram posts, but you know, she made sure that she was getting good seed to soil contact. Preferably what we'd love to have though is a little bit of light tillage. You know, the first couple inches, you don't have to go deep. You know, get it prepared, get the seed in there, get the fertilizer in there, and pack it a little bit if you can, whether it's with the four-wheeler tracks, whatever, just to make sure there's not a lot of air trapped, because air being trapped, allows for evaporation, and evaporation is not good for any plant. So sometimes food plots fail because the person doing the prep work didn't do it correctly. How do you decide what to plant? I mean, if you're out there and you're like, well, I really would like to have a food plot this year, and it's your first time, how do you decide? Well, you know, a big deciding factor for people a lot of times is money. You know, that's probably why our brassica sells the most is because it's a, it's it's monetary wise it's cheaper it's a high quality brassica mixed food plot but it costs less because these seeds cost less um, if you want an annual plot you're going to plant this if it's some place that you might not be back next year they plant this okay. if you want something that you know you want to have the plot there year after year after year and it's going to keep coming back your plot, three, uh, plot 365 is what you'd want to plant. You know, it's going to be a little more work because 
as the stuff grows, you're going to want to mow it every once in a while if the deer aren't knocking it down. Not only that, you're going to have weed seeds that blow in. Right. So you're going to want to mow it to knock off those weeds so they don't germinate, right, and produce more weeds in your area. Uh, ultimately, no plot is fail safe when it comes to windborne seeds, right? right? If you want a bedding area on your property or a screen around your blind or a screen to walk into your blind or your stand, you know, then you'd plant the sanctuary. Uh, you want a bedding area on your property to help anchor and hold deer, you'd use the sanctuary. So those are kind of the reasons those or the scenarios. Reasons we'll yeah, and a, and a lot of guys will buy both of these and put these together the first year. Okay. And then every year after that, they just go back out and they broadcast this on. Yeah. So you're getting the best of both worlds as far as, you know, because deer taste buds change like yours and mine do. You know, one day I might be craving this, and the next day I might be craving that, and it's our bodies telling us what nutrients we're needing. We're needing and the, and the prime example is, you know, you, whether it's animals or humans, the, 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 the thing that sticks out in my mind the most is, you know, you, you look at a pregnant human. Those, those weird cravings are because the body's telling that female what they need for that growing right. baby, right? And right. the same thing with deer. They'll tell you what, they're, what they need at different weeks of the year, months of the year. Speaking of timing, when, when should you start to, I mean, we're thinking about it now, that's why we're here, but when should you start planting some of these things? Well, on the back of our bags, it has the U.S. planting zones. So you're obviously, you've got March 1st through June 1st and August through September up in the yellow. And it's kind of self-explanatory if you look at the back of the bags. We're kind of in the central part of the U.S. where we live, you know, and so we're, you know, a lot of times we plant in the mid to early spring. Um, it just kind of depends on your area, and so you'd want to look at this to kind of find out exactly when you should plant. But we've had guys put in plots late, and they may be shorter than they would have been if they got them in earlier, but they still end up with a good, you know, still good solid, you know, gotcha. solid plot. Cool. Awesome, man. Jason, this has been fantastic. Thank you for being a sponsor on our show. And thanks for coming up with yeah. some great products. And uh, start looking for Thank these you. things online. Uh, get, them, get them ready so you can get them in the ground in your area as soon as the, the, the snow melts and get ready for next year's season. So, yep, that's already on my mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, coming, coming live from the ATA 2019. We're going to stop in another booth here. But check these guys out, rackology.org. It's right over there. Uh, you can see... Uh, we're all, everything that's offered here, and again, if, if you know the square footage or the square paces of a, a quarter acre food plot, write it in the comments. Whoever has the first right answer will have their choice of whatever's here free. Yep, one so let us know. Yep. So, all right, Thank guys. you. That's it from Rackology Booth. Have a good one. ETA 2019, and we'll see you in a little bit.